Welcome to this video on tire measurements. Uh, here we will talk about measurements and equipment used to measure the force and moments generated in the contact patch. We will focus on the why and how and what connected to tire measurements. Why do we measure? And finally, what type of measurements are we doing? So why do we measure tires? In vehicle dynamics, we're interested in understanding the motion of the vehicle. Hence, we want to understand the force and moments generated in the contact patch. Depending on our measurements purpose, we will use different approaches, methodologies and machines to make them. It's therefore important to understand why we're doing the measurements. We can categorize different purposes into groups. We may want to assess the performance of the tire. This could be, for example, stopping distances, a wet, a grip on wet, etc. For these purposes, it's important to not only control the conditions and environment, but also understand that the measurement principle generates the same result for repeated tests. This is, of course, important as we would like to compare performances between different tires. Another group of purposes is the one dealing with the legislative ratings. This can be viewed as an extension of the performance assessment group. Here it is important to have control of the environment and the measurement principles such that measurements can be repeated not only on different occasions but also different locations and for different machines. One example is the one behind the tire labeling ratings. For wet grip ratings, a standardized test method is used that describes the machine to be used, the test conditions, as well as the methodology to generate a result to be trusted. A third group is to investigate a phenomena, typically in research. Here, reproducibility is of importance. In other words, the ability for another person to conduct the test and measurement to see similar results and trends. This does not necessarily imply that we need to control the condition and the environment to the same extent as for performance assessment or legislative ratings. On the contrary, these types of measurements are most often non-standard due to the nature of research and how and often require the development of new methodologies, machines, etc. A fourth group of measurements is the one with the aim of obtaining parameters for a tire model. The model can be used in vehicle dynamic simulations. The tests and measurements needed depend on the complexity of the tire model they are aiming to parameterize. We will give a simple example of this at the end of this video. Now that we have understood the purpose of the measurement, we can investigate how we want to do the tests to generate the measurements. Tests that can be done using different machines and this implies different conditions and test protocols. We will therefore categorize how the measurements are done by the type of machine used for the measurement. We can categorize the machines into three main categories. Stationary rigs. These are machines dedicated to uh, performing typically indoor measurements. Mobile rigs, as the name suggests, these machines uh, are attached to or part of a vehicle that can perform the test outdoors. In targeted vehicles, this means that we are using the standard vehicle of the type relevant to the purpose. Typically, tests and measurements are performed on test tracks to gain some control of the environment and conditions. We will now go a bit more into detail about these three categories. With stationary rigs, we are performing the tests indoor and the tire to be measured rotates fixed in space while the surface is in motion. 
as it is an indoor test environment. We can control the ambient temperature and possibly humidity. As it is a dedicated machine, the precision of the motion control is very good, making the measurements very predictable and repeatable. Another aspect is that we typically do not have much compliance in the rig. This means that we are measuring the effect and the phenomena given by the tire rather than the rig itself. For example, if a machine is flexible and we are measuring the angle of travel above this flexibility, then we will measure the slip angle of the tested tire together with the flexibility of the ring. On the other hand, this might miss out on important conditions and aspects. For example, with the surface being the moving part of the rig, it is hard to recreate realistic road conditions. A typical surface of these machines is a sandpaper-like surface. From experience, we know that the characteristic of the force and moment generation are highly dependent on the road surface. Being an indoor environment, it is also a great challenge to recreate the airflow around the tire. Often, there is no additional flow generated for these measurements. We also know from experience that the characteristics is very much dependent on the temperature in the treads and the dynamics might also be fast. The arrangement with a fixed wheel uh, most often mean that the wheel can be steered to generate slip angle and braked to generate longitudinal force. Hence, generating tra traction force is not possible. As it is dedicated equipment, it is also typically very expensive. Uh, there are three categories of stationary rigs. The first one could be called drum-based. The surface is either the inner or outer part of a drum or a cylinder on which the tire is pressed. These machines were previously the de facto standard for tire measurements. They share the properties of other stationary rigs but differ in one fundamental aspect. Since the drum is round, the contact will either be convex or concave, depending on the configuration. From the brush model videos, we know that the pressure distribution has a great impact on the characteristics of the force and moment generation. The convexity or concavity of the contact will change the pressure distribution compared to a complete flat surface. This is why these types of machines are being replaced by the next category of machines, belt-based. However, there are still applications where drum-based machines are used, for example in rolling resistance measurements. The drum is now replaced with a paved steel belt with high stiffness and support from below. This means that the surface can be made completely flat. Uh, these types of rigs are hence often called, referred to as flat track machines. These are now the industry standard for many applications, for example, tire uh, model permit sessions. The final category of tire measurement machines can be called beam-based. Here, the surface is made uh, of a straight beam that is pushed underneath the test wheel. While this arrangement can be made much stiffer than the belt-based and with a flat contact patch, it is limited in speed and distance of measurement. The availability of these types of machines is very limited and typically used in research applications where the limited travel speed is not an issue. Here we can see three examples of the different types of uh, stationary test rigs. An outer drum rig at the Technical University of Graz in Austria, a belt rig at the US located tire testing company Kalspan, a beam based uh, machine at the Research Institute VTI in Sweden.